Honourable Lord Mayor of London, Mr. David Bouton, Mr. Alan Collett, High Commissioner, Mr. Anshuman Magazine, Mr. Sachin Santer, distinguished participants in today's conference. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to participate in this conference today and to welcome the Honourable Lord Mayor to India. And uh, uh, this conference organized by RICS, the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, this international conference, Cities 2000, are we on track, focusing on four pillars of infrastructure development, which is planning, finance, technology, and skills, is very important at this point of time in India. Because the challenges of urbanization in India are indeed unprecedented. The urban population is expected to grow to 600 million in the next decade or the next decade and a half. And the number of cities with a population of more than 1 million, it's about 53 cities now which are of 1 million population. And these are expected to grow to about 87 again in the next decade, in the next decade and a half. The <clears throat> spurt in growth of urban population has been due to migration, uh, natural increase, and inclusion of new areas under urban. India has a very young demographic profile, and this makes uh, a large number of youngsters highly mobile. It increases the urban mobility. And with India growing, with India growing, even when we say it's growing only between 5 and 6 percent and we are targeting 8 percent, uh, there are new economic centers of economic activity um, being formed. And this young population and the rural population is attracted to areas of economic activity. Uh, today, the urban sector contributes about 60 percent of GDP which is likely to go up to 70% in the next decade. And we estimate that 70% of new jobs will be uh, created in our urban areas in the next decade. Uh, so with 70% of the GDP contribution coming from urban areas in the future, and the population projections indicating well over 40% urbanization in the coming decade, there is uh, not only a clear need, but an extremely urgent need towards the urban sector. Now we have a multiplicity of institutions. Uh, we have the challenges of capacity building, governance issue. And uh, uh, when we were just told that uh, we need to double it, I had remarked, I had remarked to Mr. Alan Collett, it's not double it, it's to quadruple it. Uh, that is the scale which we've got to address. And uh, one of the big things uh, in managing urbanization uh, is going to be capacity building. How do we build capacity to manage this urbanization? How do we build capacity to uh, focus uh, on skills and development? But four very important areas, three others, uh, besides capacity building, would be planning, funding, and urban governance. Uh, in India, urban planning has been very distinct, has been prescriptive, everything is prescribed, has been slow, and has flown from the top down, from national to state and state to the districts and districts to the smaller municipalities within a district. Um, as a result of this, uh, informal development has proliferated across cities congesting public and environmental spaces, sprawling out on the periphery, construction of unsafe buildings, and settle settlements where no services exist. And we all know that this trend is not sustainable at all, and undoubtedly adds pressure on the political, financial, and social systems. If we look at suburbanization, in India, suburbanization has happened by default, not by design. Uh, how do we have planned suburbanization? How do we have dispersal 
from our cities, because dispersal from our cities is going to be very important. All cities having exceeded their carrying capacities. This is one of our huge challenges. Um, just in Delhi, just in Delhi, we have 40 million people living in unauthorized colonies. 40 million people, over 1,600 unauthorized colonies. That was the uh, assessment and the survey done in 2007. We are in 2012. I shudder to think if we do a survey now, what it will be. So when the capital of India, when the capital of India has, uh, uh, has 40 million people living in unplanned areas, forget about it being unauthorized, they are completely unplanned. How do we deal with this density? Um, of course, we have, in India have the most restrictive FAR, which even by Asian standards is exceptionally low. And uh, this needs to be uh, revised, looking at the infrastructure and the location where it can be increased. One of the possibilities being discussed is transit-oriented development, where we can have mixed use, we can have uh, 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 higher and more intensive development. So in Delhi, we are looking at uh, transit-oriented development where there's a huge wide road, there's the metro in the middle, so that people can come in metros, go to work, have their entertainment uh, and recreation, sit in the metro and go back home. This is what we call transit-oriented development. So we want to see what, where carrying capacity can be built, and urban planners would need to have a look at this. And in India, we have a need to learn from everywhere, particularly um, from the UK. And uh, I'd like to uh, really express my appreciation to uh, Lord Mayor David Wooton on the urban regeneration works carried on in London and feel that India can benefit from the British experience. We have a lot to learn and I've seen firsthand some of the major development works carried out, regeneration works carried out in the last two decades. Uh, while the Western countries are looking at re renewal and regeneration, we are talking basically about building, uh, about building infrastructure. Because even what we build in the next five years will not be doing any renewal. It will be not building for the future. It will be catching up with the past. But that is the huge deficit which we have. Uh, in India, growth has preceded uh, infrastructure in all areas. With growth preceding infrastructure in all areas, we have this huge deficit in all areas of urban infrastructure, including uh, urban infrastructure. Uh, we have recently, as was mentioned, entered into a memorandum of understanding with the UK on urban regeneration and development. And it's my firm belief that such a partnership between the two nations will provide an enabling platform and lead to enhanced cooperation and deepen the engagement in the areas of sustainable master planning, transport planning, land economics, uh, very importantly, heritage management, regeneration, uh, governance, regeneration capacity building, um, public-private partnership arrangements. This is very important because so much of the investment, the one trillion dollars we require uh, for urban infrastructure would have to come from the private sector. The government will not be able to provide it. So what is the ideal PPP models in urban infrastructure, whether it's in water, whether it's in sewage, <coughs> whether it's in transportation? Uh, we need to have several models of PPP because in PPP there's no one size fits all. We'll have to look at several PPP models because that is what is going to be the, uh, uh, the future source of funding. We've been through our first phase of the JNURM, which was our urban renewal mission, and we are now concluding the formulation of the second phase of our urban renewal mission. Uh, this will support PPP, besides providing funding to the states. But the states will need to get their act together, will need to also 
ensure that there's adequate capacity building going down at our municipal level. Sometimes the focus becomes only on the large cities, on the 4 million plus, 5 million plus cities. But we need to look at cities of 200,000 to uh, 400,000. These are the cities which are having the highest percentage growth in urbanization. Not in numbers, but in terms of percentage growth. So this, again, is um, very important that we look at capacity building right at the lowest and the smallest municipalities we have. Because we cannot afford that things go in these smaller and growing municipalities by default. Um, uh, under the RICS um, paper for vision of cities, policy initiative for the second year now, this is providing a platform to discuss and debate whether India is on the right track to meet all the necessary and desired outcomes to shape its urban future and create sustainable cities by the year 2030. Um, RICS has a unique contribution to make to the sustainable evolution of cities within India as it can draw upon the substantial shared knowledge and expertise across the world. Uh, my ministry would be happy to encourage and support the RICS uh, in uh, these endeavors. Uh, to conclude, I would like to reiterate that the challenge of managing urbanization needs to be addressed through a combination of increased investment, a coherent national urban policy framework, strengthening the framework for governance and financing, and a comprehensive, most importantly, a comprehensive capacity building program at all levels of government. I would congratulate RICS for organizing this conference, and I'm sure that these dis discussions would fuel um, exchange, knowledge, uh, and experience in creating the future cities of India. Thank you very much.